Hey there! In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to choose a strumming pattern for a song. This question has come up quite a bit, and it's an important one because we all want to learn our favorite songs, but sometimes it can be frustrating when you don't know what strumming pattern to use. Now, there are a few key factors we have to keep in mind, and I'll break them down for you. Here they are. Time signature, tempo, and your strumming hand speed. So let's start with time signature. Time signature tells you how the music is to be counted. And most songs that you're going to hear on the radio, or most songs that you listen to, it will usually be in 4-4 time, which is common time. That essentially just means you're going to count to four. So four beats in each bar. You're going to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. There are other songs in different time signatures, but for the most part, uh, you're going to be playing songs in 4-4 time, especially if they are pop or rock or country or folk uh, songs. So uh, in this example, in this lesson today, we're just going to stick with 4-4 timing and use that as an example of how we're going to find and use a strumming pattern or choose a strumming pattern to play. All right, so time signature is very important because you need to know how long you're on each chord for. So you need to know, um, you know, do I count to 4 four times and then change chords, so on and so forth. So really, really important to know. Um, that leads us into our next key ingredient, which is tempo. Now tempo basically just tells us how fast or how slow to play a song. Um, the way that it's me measured is in beats per minute or BPM. So let's say you have a song that's in 60 beats per minute. That means you're going to play um, for every second, there's going to be a beat. So one beat per second. That's at 60 beats per minute. Or let's say the song is at 120 beats per minute. That means you're going to have two beats per second. Now, don't get confused with all that. Essentially, all we're trying to do is find out how fast or slow the song is so that we know how to strum and so that we're strumming it at the right tempo. You don't want to if a song is meant to be played at 120 beats per minute, you don't want to play it at 60 beats per minute or start it, you know, start it really, really slow with your strumming hand. You want to, you want to know exactly how fast you're going to be strumming your hand in order to play it at the right tempo. So let's just use a metronome as, as an example. I've got one on my phone that I use. Um, you'll want to find a metronome that will allow you to tap the tempo. And the reason why that's really important is because when you're listening to a song, you're, you're already going to know this. So you have an internal metronome already built into your body. You know, when you, let's say you're listening to a song and you start tapping your foot, that's just your internal drummer kind of going off or you're snapping your fingers. All you're doing is You've, you've heard the beat and you're listening to the beat and you can feel the rhythm and so your foot just naturally starts tapping the rhythm of the song or your fingers start snapping the tempo of the song, the rhythm, the beats in the song. So that's all you're doing when you're tapping your foot or you're snapping your fingers is you're just feeling the, the rhythm uh, of the song, the groove. So what you want to do is find a metronome that allows you to tap the tempo. So let's say you're listening to a song on the radio and it's going about this speed. And you'll only find that by making sure that you're tapping your foot or snapping your fingers. So find the natural rhythm that you can feel and start tapping that into your metronome. And the reason why it's important to find one that allows you to tap is because it's going to tell you exactly the tempo that you're tapping at. So in this case, I was tapping it at 109 beats per minute. So then what I would do is I would make a note of that. Uh, if I was working on a particular song, I would, I would start tapping and it would tell me the beats per minute. So then when I start playing that song and practicing that song, I can use, you know, that tempo every time I play it so that I'm not starting too slowly and I'm not starting too fast, but I'm playing it 
at the right tempo. So that's really, really important. So again, number one is to know whether you're counting to four, whether you're counting to three, whether you're counting to six, so knowing the time signature. Number two, you want to know the tempo of the song so that you're playing it at the right speed. And that leads us into, into our last key ingredient, which is how fast to strum you, with your strumming hand. Now, this is a bit different than tempo. I'm going to explain here in a second. What I mean by that is there are two different ways that you can strum your guitar in terms of, uh, in terms of the speed. Now, not the tempo, but whether you are playing eighth note strumming or sixteenth note strumming. Again, that's eighth note strumming or sixteenth note strumming. Let me show you an example of eighth note strumming. Let's go to 90 beats per minute. This is eighth note strumming. This is strumming a downstroke on every beat. One, two, three, four. And our hand is moving up in between the beat. So one and two and three and so the hand is coming up on the end one and two and three and four and one and or if i'm going to strum if i strum the ands then you're going to really hear the eighth notes one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so right now i'm strumming eighth note strumming so again let's let's pretend that the song is 90 beats per minute that's the tempo we have two options. We can strum it like this in terms of our strumming hand, eighth note, or we can strum sixteenth note strumming. So that just means we are going to move our hand twice as fast. So instead of going down, 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 now we're going to go down, 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 down. So the tempo is still the same. The tempo is still 90 beats per minute, but our hand is moving twice as fast. Now our hand is going one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a... If I'm strumming each one, you'll hear it. One E, oops. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... All right, so that would be 16th note strumming because I'm strumming 16th notes. I'm going one E and a. And those are all 16th notes. One E and a. So on every beat, I'm going one E and a. So again, let's just look at that really quick. This is eighth note strumming. This is 16th note strumming. Now, when you're strumming a song, you wouldn't typically just do up and down all the way through. You're going to mix it up. Uh, oftentimes when you hear 16th note strumming, you're just going like this. A lot of times it's downstrokes, especially in modern music. You hear that in, in, in British rock or pop. You hear lots of... Um, just doing the down strokes. So this is 16th note strumming, just doing down strokes. Still 16th note strumming, mostly down strokes. Now let's go to eighth note strumming. Now I'm mixing it up and adding some up strokes. Down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down. Okay, the reason why it's really important for your you to understand eighth note and sixteenth note strumming is because oftentimes when you're choosing a strumming pattern, 
it's a matter of personal preference because once you have the key building blocks like the time signature, so knowing whether you're going to count to four or three or six, um, once you have that and you have your tempo knowing how fast it is or how slow the song is in terms of beats per minute, then the rest is sort of up to you. If you're playing a song that uh, has a particular feel to it, you can kind of choose where you add your down strums, where you do your up strums. But the key is you're going to want to know whether to choose eighth note or 16th note strumming. And sometimes that's just, again, just a matter of preference. When you're listening to a song or playing a song, it's not, there's not just one particular strumming pattern that is going to be the one to play and every other one is wrong. What I'm showing you here is that there are a variety of different patterns that you can use uh, that can all work with a particular song. So it doesn't have to be, they don't have to be all, uh, you know, there's only one strumming pattern that works and all the other ones are wrong. You can use a number of different patterns, a number of different variations that will still work with that song, but it be becomes more of a matter of preference, you know, what sounds good to you and what you're comfortable playing as well. So again, just to recap, we've got our time signature, our tempo, and whether we're strumming eighth note strumming or 16th note strumming. Once you have that, then you can decide, let's say I'm doing eighth note strumming. So my arm is moving, my strumming hand is moving with the beat of the song. Then it's totally up to you as to whether you just do down strokes. Right now I'm just going between the G and the C. So you could do just down strokes and that would work because you've got everything else already in place. You've got the time signature. One, two, three, four. You've got the tempo, which right now we've got it set at 90 beats per minute. And then it's up to you to decide whether you want to do all down strums or you want to do a combination of down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. Or maybe you just want to do down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up. Or maybe you want to do 16th note strumming. All right, hopefully this helps. Hopefully you've been able to see that, yes, there are building blocks to finding a strumming pattern that works, but some of it is also up to you, you know, in terms of preference, how you wanna play a song. Uh, there are a number of different strumming patterns that you can use for a particular song. So just remember that. Get the building blocks, time signature, tempo, and then choose whether you wanna strum it 16th note strumming or eighth note strumming and do the upstrokes, you know, when you want to put those in or the downstrokes when you want to use those. Um, but just know that it's really, it's really up to you to kind of um, fill, in, fill in the gap, fill in the blank in terms of how you want to strum the song. There are some exceptions to that, but that's essentially how you find the strumming pattern for a song. All right, now find your favorite song, go try it out, and I'll see you in another lesson soon.